2021 in March and I managed to get myself an RTX 3070 without being scalped. How did I do so, you ask? Well, I ended up buying a pre-build or self-build from a local store, in this case, Memory Express. Uh, I also had the option of buying a pre-build online from Dell. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the Dell online, the G5 that I had the option of uh, getting, which had a 3070. And I'm also going to talk about the pre-build, uh, well, self-build that I did from Memory Express. The first kind of reason why I was going to do this is um, on, Dell, or, uh, on the Dell website, I found this on uh, Reddit, uh, someone posted a pretty good uh, uh, pre-built deal on Dell um, last week, which would have been the first or second week of March at the time. And it was a 3070 build, RTX 3070 build, with a uh, 10700F, I think it was. You could customize the graphic, uh, the CPU, you could go F, you could go uh, down to a 10400. Uh, you could customize the graphics card too and go down to a 3060 Ti, um, or even lower, a 2060 I think they had. And there's other things you could spec too, but uh, the price was excellent. With a 10700F uh, and a 3070, which are impossible to find right now, I ended up, um, once everything was solved, it was around, I don't know, it was around $1,600 or something like that, which is really good for now in 2021. Uh, if you were to ask me this two years ago, I would have said this is insanity for what I'm getting out of it. I mean, they're good parts, but I mean, that's a lot of money. And this is a very good deal. Um, but, you know, the market is broken right now. We have multiple things going on. We have uh, a huge rise in mining popularity. Um, Bitcoin mining. Uh, I think it's Ethereum that's the big one right now. Um, a lot of it could be because you know people are stuck at home. They're repurposing their machines. Uh, a lot of people are out of work, so it's income for them. And it's an in people do it for interest as well for fun. Um, so that's one part of it. Um, they're not to full blame though. People like to rip on one or the other or the other, but it's it's kind of like the perfect storm. So you have that going on. Um, you then have a pandemic with. You know, people not working as much. You have a lot of issues there uh, in terms of getting components, and this has been going on for about a year now. Uh, you also have just shortages. I think the wafer shortages with AMD and just shortages across the board with various computer components. So, you know, supply and demand. The supply is low, the price is high. Um, so you have those two things going on, and of course you have scalpers. Um, these 3070 cards go on the market and scalpers pick them up. Uh, or were, they, even they can't get them anymore, but they were picking them up and then reselling them for quite a bit more. Um, or just generic people buying them and then, oh, I don't actually need this, it's expensive. Um, I ended up buying it, pulled the trigger. <clears throat> I knew there was gonna be issues with the motherboard and some heating, so I was gonna have to adapt that anyways. Um, but then I've been working with uh, some of my friends that I've met online on the, uh, uh, there's a Discord channel called Build a Computer, Build a PC uh, Canada. Um, there's a Reddit that's associated with that. But the Discord's really good. The, the people on there are excellent for you know helping each other. You, know, we, you can send ideas past each other, build ideas. They post sales. And they're just a good community, non-toxic, really helpful community. Um, so I was working with some people on there, and there's one individual I was talking with over the last few days. Um, we've been communicating for quite a bit. And we found, you know, and, and he knows a lot about computer building and price, fair prices and that. And so we found out that um, you, it is possible to get a GPU even though they're out of stock everywhere. Um, and if you know if you do this properly, you can end up uh, basically getting, you know, I don't have to then go buy a new case when I get to Dell and get a new motherboard and all these things that I would have had to upgrade. So I don't want to be wasteful and that's a pain and you know, I have to wait for a month on the Dell anyways. So, um, so I went to um, Memory Express, I'm in Calgary, so we have Memory Express here. Uh, and they're, normally they don't have these on their websites. You cannot buy 3070s. At all. You can't walk in the store and buy them, they're just out of stock. Um, you can buy pre-builds. So they, some of the locations in Calgary have pre-built machines where it's already set up. Um, and some of them, like this one, they will put you together a build. So you can put parts together. As long as, it, uh, as long as it's a complete build, they will give you the 3070. With the caveat, you cannot return the parts um, without the 3070 because they don't want people to just resell that or scalp it. So you'd have to bring all the parts back as a complete build. You know, looking at price matching with Canada Computers, Amazon, Newegg, and all these different websites. Because, you know, if you're building a machine all together, they may have a couple parts on a really good price and a couple not so good. So normally, if you're building on your own, you know, you go website to website, you grab a few different parts here and there, you go into Best Buy, you grab whatever it is, you piece it together, uh, if you know what you're doing. 
but that wasn't an option because you have to complete everything together. So you know, I really had to be careful with putting everything as I wanted it to be as good as possible. What I was trying to do is get something close to what I bought from Dell, reasonably similar in price, but with you know some of the superior, like the, the better motherboard and the uh, um, better case and some of the things that you know the Dells are critiqued for. And so I ended up grabbing some parts that are you know not the top of the line for some of them, but it managed to get it to a reasonable budget. And the problem is, is you know, these video cards are so expensive right now, incredibly expensive. So uh, if you want a budget, like something that is reasonably budgeted, that's not, you know, 2000 to $2,500 with one of these cards, if you can find one, you're gonna have to cut back in some areas, which is what I did. Um, so yeah, anyways, that's the story. I'll just show you guys what I got. Um, I didn't go with the ultra everything because I'm, I'm semi-budget. Don't have the money for that. Um, so I got a 10 uh, just straight 10 i5 from Intel. Um, I was really looking at going 3600 over the last couple of years, but the prices on the 3600s are actually pretty high right now. The sales just aren't as deep, um, but there's an amazing chip. So if you can get a 3600 for a good price, go for it. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this, this performs roughly on par. There's some productivity tasks where the AMD does better. Um, just the way they are. My laptop is AMD and I'm very impressed with this performance of it and my G15 was an AMD. And amazing performance for the power that, you, that it requires. Um, but in terms of like gaming, uh, the 10400 is about the same, um, but it's cheap. So this, um, I got it for, unfortunately because I had to do the full build, remember what I just said, um, I had to get this for about 210 Canadian dollars, which is actually a decent price right now from Memory Express, so reasonable. But the, uh, the F version of this, which doesn't have the integrated graphics, this has integrated graphics, which is irrelevant to me because I have a graphics card. Um, so the, just the F version, which doesn't have those integrated graphics, was 160 on uh, Newegg uh, eBay, uh, 170, I think, on just e Newegg itself. Um, and then Amazon, a little bit more expensive, but still cheaper than this. So that was a bit of a hit that I had to take, about 30, or 30 to $50. Because um, you know they had to do the pre-build to avoid, and you know I'm not blaming Memory Express for doing this. They they need to do this to protect themselves and the consumers really, and their you know people from just walking and grabbing RTX and then just walking out the RTX 3070s and just selling them at a profit. Because you could, you legitimately could right now. I could probably flip this for a hundred or two hundred dollars profit without question because you just can't find them. But I don't want to. I want the machine. So. Um, yeah, so I did take the hit on that, which is fine. It's still a good card. Um, it does have a decent upgrade path. You can go uh, like 10700 if you want, or 10700F or K, KF, I think it is. Um, but this will be fine for what I'm doing, probably for a few years. Um, I mean, my desktop is a 3570K, so that's that. So that's the graph. It's the, uh, the processor. Um, I'm going to save the graphics card for last, so because that's, I'm a dick like that. Um, decent power supply unit. Uh, they were kind of pushing me on this one to go with, you know, some other brands. The one they recommended, I've uh, had some issues with heat and overheating. Um, it's uh, It's got a 10-year warranty in China, uh, which may not seem like a lot to you, but um, at least I think that's what that says. That's what the guy in Discord told me. Um, I don't read Mandarin. Um, but if it's 10 years on a competitive market in China, I mean, that's pretty good. Looks like it has five years in the West here in Canada. It's uh, 80 gold. Um, it's in-win, by the way, in-win. It's a 750 watt. Um, I was looking at 650 and they said, you know, it's not enough for the 3070 with that chip. And I was like, eh, you might be right, but if I go with the higher one, then if I upgrade to the 10700 KF, where I overclock or something, this extra 100 watts, it'll help, I guess. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is a very reliable power supply unit. So um, that's good, um, reasonable price. It's not super expensive. Uh, it was a little like $120 Canadian for that there. So uh, you can add that up if you want. Uh, RAM, uh, this doesn't take the super fast RAM, so I got the Crucial Ballistics uh, 3200. Um, the RAM speeds on these are is not as uh, not as capable as an AMD, but anyways, it, it should be fine. Uh, two times eight gigabytes. Um, I believe this you can overclock this decently with the motherboard that I got. You can't really, but I can use this in the future. So this is good. Crucial is good RAM. Um, reasonable price, I think it was 109 Canadian, later than 110, which is fine. Uh, motherboard is under my little paper here. So nothing crazy, it's an MSI H410M Pro. It's a tiny, tiny, kind of tiny little board. Um, it's a budget friendly, but still reliable board. 
Um, there was other options. You know, I was looking at basically two hundred and twenty dollars to get into the next level of motherboard that would be uh, better, but still good. Uh, this one here is pretty small, actually, which is nice. Um, so if I want to do a slim case, I could do it. So you only get two RAM slots, which will be fine for me for now. Um, you get four SATA ports, which is fine. Uh, graphics card, you know, it's fine. It's pretty reasonable, nothing crazy. Uh, NVMe, it uh, looks like you get uh, dual... Is that a dual slot? No, there's no way that's a dual slot. You can do Wi-Fi in that too as well which is really nice. So I'll probably, I only have one SSD, uh, 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 NVMe drive. So I'm gonna put that in there and I'm just gonna use a 2.5 inch for that there, but uh, there you go. Um, so that's the board there, nothing crazy. Um, I didn't wanna spend a ton because I will probably upgrade this at some point in um, the coming year, year or two. Um, I don't like to just like keep fucking parts, you know, because it's not good for the environment and it's not good for my wallet, but uh, this will be good for a while, and then you know, someone else can have it, basically. Um, when I need to apparently go between beyond 16 gigabytes of RAM at some point in my life, whenever that will be, when we get to that point. So that's that. Decent, decent, decent. 100 bucks, though. Um, Canadian, which is actually pretty good. It wasn't on sale. That's their base price at Memory Express, so you could probably find it cheaper, um, but a very fair price for what it is. Um, and I don't have any storage, as you can see. Um, which is fine because I have a, a one terabyte NVMe drive here that I have from before. Um, it's got some thermal paste on it, or a thermal pad. Let's see if I can get the brand. I can't remember what brand it is actually. Eh, I don't want to tear that off. Uh, but it's a one terabyte NVMe drive. It's got good speeds. Um, it was running basically on par with the, uh, the Western Digital SN... 550 I think I had that was running alongside this and they were both fine. It's not like a super super fast uh, storage but anyway so that's going to be my main storage right there and I bought this before I moved out here just the actual SSD one terabyte uh, and it was dirt cheap at the time because it was a little over a year ago it was about a year and a half ago when SSDs were in a healthy price range they had just got to that point where they were no longer super expensive and the prices were coming down they were getting competitive this is great as a storage drive it's an 860 uh, cuvo it's not their best line but it was cheap i think i paid a hundred dollars for it 99.99 canadian which is nice so then i'll have a terabyte for uh whatever i want probably you know my files whatever i do for my work and just generic stuff and I will then stick probably another SSD, a cheaper one that I can find, just a small one in here, just to flip files back and forth if I need to do that. Um, or you could put a physical hard drive in here, um, Meg drive, but I'm not interested in that. So there you go. So that's the build right there. The, uh, let's get into the part that people actually care about, which is the RTX card, uh, RTX 3070 card. They had this for uh, $8.99, which is insane, but reasonably insane in this world um you know you're going to pay a lot more if you buy it all used or um uh scalped i guess i would say or resold you're probably going to pay 1100 1200 maybe 1300 and it's going to go up even more in the future so i mean this is actually a good deal at 900 dollars. it pains me to say that but it is true um they did have an evga model um which had two fans for the same pre for a few a few dollars cheaper, and I wasn't interested in that. And then they had, you know, they have a bunch on their website, but the guy actually had to go in the back and see what they have because it's all listed as out of stock. But they will do them in the pre-builds, so that's the way you're going to get one of these cards um, without paying an unreasonable amount of money. You're going to either get it off like Dell as a pre-build, which is a great way to go, to be honest. You're probably going to have to make some tweaks to the case. There's a couple of YouTube videos on that. I'll see if I can find one that I was watching to increase the airflow through them because they're super hot. Um, cover the, the VRAM and that with some heat sinks and maybe just rechange the motherboard to be honest um, with something this size and you'd be fine. Um, so hundred bucks right out the gate basically to improve that quite a bit. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, or you can go to Memory Express and get them to do a build for you depending on the location. If you're in, this is for Calgarians I guess. Go in there and say, um, I guess there's, I think there's some in BC and there's some in Manitoba as well, but anyways, or check with other companies, check with Canada Computers or check with Best Buy or whatever. Maybe they have pre-built options. You can go in and get it like a Dell, um, and just, it's pre-built, you're good to go. 
Um, or you can do something like the one that I went to where you can do pre-builds where you know they package everything together. You do have to have all the components, more or less all the components, and then um, you can build it yourself or you can have them build it for you, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's basically a pre-build, more or less. But you can then you can customize it, right? Like you don't have to go with what they have. Um, with like Dell, you know, you can do some degree of customization, which was really nice, but I just didn't want to have to deal with the motherboard in that after. So that's the big boy there. Uh, it's a triple fan. I guess you can't really see it. There you go. I've been staring at it the whole time and no one else can see it. So it's a triple fan. Uh, gigabytes are, from what I've heard, pretty good. The, my, my buddy on the Discord channel said it's fine. Uh, this is a gigabyte. It's a tough model. GPU. Do I feel special? I have a weird power from this. I was never going to buy a 3070. I bought that laptop and I was like, I'm good. And I thought, you know, the market, even when these came out, I was like, people are crazy. Why are they jumping on these cards? Um, but it's just, it's such a dramatic improvement from, a lot of people didn't buy into, you know, the 2080s and the 2060s. Some people did, but there's a, so a lot of people are still rocking things like I have, like the, the 580, RX 580 or 570 or a 1060 um, or a 1050 Ti, right? Or even the people who have like good cards at the time, like a 1080. And there's, like, you're just getting a huge jump in performance when you go with something like this, um, but you are paying for it. Um, and as a result of that, people are selling 1080s for super expensive. 1060s are probably more expensive than a couple of years ago. 1050 Ti is kind of like the sweet spot nowadays, which is kind of sad because they're reasonably priced, reasonably priced to get these parts. So um, my suggestion would be one, check out some of these boards for like these Dell pre-builds or whatever company pre-builds. Um, get it at a good price, very deep discount, um, and then you, you can either use that as it is, make some tweaks to it, modify it to get the, you know, the temperatures more reasonable, or just expect to throw an extra hundred bucks in for that motherboard and do a swap. Unfortunately, you know, I don't like wasting things, but Dell, some of these Dells just don't have the greatest components, um, but you're getting, you're buying it for the graphics card, the RAM, storage, and the uh, processor, basically. Uh, or you can do what I did and try to hit up like a Memory Express or whatever you have near your Canada computers if you're in Ontario. Um, if you're American, I'm not too sure which yet, but I'm sure you have lots of options. Go in there, see if they will sell you a 3070 as a build, because you're not going to walk in and get one. You're going to have to hunt and hunt and hunt. It's stressful, and you're going to get either scalped online from a third party, or you're going to have to just get super lucky and line up in the morning and get one of these. Um, or you can be patient and just wait. Um, but the problem with that is who knows how long this is going to go. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better. So if you have a functional machine uh, that's good, you know, you might be better off just waiting for a bit, um, unfortunately. Or, you know, wait for AMD to drop more options. Um, or, you know, just try to go in and do what I did and try to get like a pre-build like this and hopefully you can get a reasonable price for it um, with, the, with the full build. Don't pay a ton of money. Don't pay you know, three grand for something like this. And then you're gonna, in a year and a half down the road when everything starts to resolve itself, you're gonna feel like crap because you're gonna see that all these components, oh, now they're a thousand bucks for the whole thing. Um, so, you know, don't, unless you have the money to burn, maybe you do, everyone's different, um, then I'm not gonna tell you what to do with your money. Um, and if you have the money, go for it. Uh, but if you're like me and you're kind of like, you're actually budgeting, um, I mean, I probably could have not got a 3070, but I don't want to have to buy another machine for several years going forward, probably five years, six years, maybe even. Um, that's how long, I have. I still have a 10 year old 30, 3750K, so you can see how I operate. Um, so I decided to go for it, and then probably I'll have to do an upgrade to that, I'm good to go. So anyways, sorry for the long-winded video, you may or may not find it interesting about me rambling, I like to ramble. But uh, yeah, hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, so it looks like it's a 32-minute video now. Sorry about that, but uh, thanks for watching if you did.